friends, um, welcome to another Wolverine video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make my Sacred Breath Tea Blend. Um, I developed this blend specifically at the beginning of the COVID epidemic, or pandemic now, um, to help with breathing issues that somebody might have that aren't serious enough to go to the hospital, but are bothersome enough that you want to do something about them. Um, I also made a Sacred Breath chest rub, which is similar to like a, an herbal mentholatum. It doesn't have menthol in it, but it's similar to like a Vicks, but made with essential oils as opposed to menthol. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a blend. Um, the Sacred Tea, uh, the Sacred Breath Tea Blend has several of the herbs you see behind me. Um, one of which being Molin, another being Lobelia, um, it has nettle, it has astragalus, and I'll go over all these herbs and what they do when we get into making the tea. All right, you guys enjoy. Hey friends, and welcome to the Crow Boutique Apothecary. Um, you might be watching this on my Wolverine channel, which is great as well. Welcome in. I am going to make a tea blend today called Sacred Breath. And this is a tea blend I developed at the beginning of the pandemic to help with any lung issues people might be having. Although it's generally just a great um, lung tea anyway. So if you have like asthma or emphysema or allergies, anytime that your lungs are kind of upset with you, this is a great tea blend for that. It is available in my Etsy shop, um, which I will link in the description box below. So um, before we get started, I think it's important to mention that you should always consult with an herbalist or somebody with herbal training before deciding to make a tea blend on your own. Um, if you're going to wildcraft or pick your weeds in the wild, so to speak, you should definitely be very confident with your botany and your ability to identify plants. Um, it should go without saying that you should never eat a plant that you don't recognize. You should never ingest anything that you're not sure of. And you should always, always, always consult with a professional before using any kind of herbal product. Um, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comment box. If you need a consultation, please message me on my Etsy. And um, I'd be more than happy to help you out. So with that said, let's begin. For this tea recipe, I am going to be using nettle, astragalus root, ginger root, mullein leaf, meadow sweet, flower, meadow sweet, rose hips, dandelion root, and lobelia. That's a lot. So I'm going to start making them and kind of give you an overview of each herb as we go. Um, it won't be super in depth as this would be a very, very long video if I did that. So I'm just going to kind of get into making it. You will hear me rustling around, moving jars. Um, you know, it's for educational purposes. I'm sorry if the sound isn't that great. Okay, so the first herb that we're going to use is called Stinging Nettle. And Stinging Nettle is a beautiful member of the mint family. Um, it grows wild all over the place. And the reason it's called Stinging Nettle is because it will sting you. So I find when I'm working with nettle, I like to have a lot of extra respect because even dry, she will sting you. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily that irritating. I kind of like the way that it feels. When I do get stung, I feel like I need it. Um, but some people find it really irritating. So this is an herb that I would definitely recommend leaving up to the professionals if you're not comfortable with the idea of being stung. So this tea is going to be two parts nettle. And for my measuring cup, I have this little teacup that a friend gave me years ago. And I'm just going to fill that twice. And I'm sorry, if my voice gets a little bit hoarse while I'm doing this, it's because something surprising about herbalism is how dusty it is. It does get ridiculously dusty in my apothecary. Um, I dusted today. I'll probably have to dust again tomorrow because it's just so dusty. Working with dried herbs. <laughs> so nettle is an amazing herb because it is highly nutritive. It's full of beautiful, delicious minerals like iron and manganese. It helps with inflammation. It's it's a hypotensive, so it actually lowers your blood pressure. 
And nettle is one that I feel like everybody should be drinking like every day. It's so good for you. It's a wonderful overall health tonic and it makes a really lovely cup of tea. Um, so that's nettle, that's kind of the base of this tea. The next herb that we're gonna be using is astragalus. Now astragalus root, we're gonna do about half a part. So it'll be about half a teacup of astragalus root. And the astragalus root is an immunomodulator. So what that means, if your immune system is hyperactive and you suffer from um, autoimmunity, astragalus is actually going to lower your immune response to a reasonable le level. It's gonna stop your body from overreacting. And if you're immunocompromised, astragalus is going to raise your immune response to an appropriate level um, and help prevent infections. So astragalus is one, I use it in my elderberry syrup as well. Um, anything that has to do with immunity and health, I use astragalus in. It's kind of one of my go-to herbs. It's one of my favorites. It is used in Ayurvedic medicine as well. I am trained in Western herbalism, so I'm not very familiar with Ayurveda, although I do have a good friend who is, and I might ask her to join me on some videos at some point in the future. Um, if you're interested in Ayurveda, there's a lot of wonderful material out there. I have trained in some Eastern paradigms, like I'm trained in acupressure and um, reflexology, but as far as herbs go, I was trained in Western clinical herbalism. So a very American uh, standard for herbals, actually based on the English herbals from you know, the Middle Ages, a lot of this has been handed down and then taught. So you won't hear me using very many terms from Ayurveda or from, you know, uh, traditional Chinese medicine because that's not the training that I have. I have training in Western herbalism. So, which I feel is really accessible um, here in the United States because most people are more familiar with the plants and the names that we use here because all these plants are growing here. Okay, so for the next herb, I'm going to use mullein leaf. Now, mullein, you might be familiar with, grows very tall, has fuzzy leaves and little yellow flowers. It's actually an invasive species here in Colorado, where I'm at. Um, but it is a wonderful lung tonic. And we're going to do one part mullein. It's kind of a looser, fluffier type of herb. And... Again, measurements don't have to be exact for a tea. You're making tea. It's not, it's not complicated. So about one part mullein in the bowl. Mullein is one that has been used for thousands of years in traditional Native American medicine. Um, it's used a lot as smoke medicine. It is a wonderful tonic for the lungs. I personally don't use smoke medicine very much, although I'm not against it. I do... Um, sometimes do ceremonies with a good friend who is Lakota and he uses smoke medicine. So when I'm there in ceremony, of course, I'm going to follow that. Um, but personally, when I'm recommending herbs for people and how to use them, I almost never recommend smoking anything. Doesn't mean it's not okay to do, it's just personally, I don't make that recommendation on a very regular basis. It, on a rare occasion, I might, but... Um, I would prefer tea or tincture to to um, smoke medicine. So, mullein leaf. The next one we're going to use is called meadowsweet, and meadowsweet is a nice demulcent herb, um, which basically means that it creates this nice slimy layer on the inside of your body that just coats everything and soothes everything. Um, if you think about like when you break an aloe leaf open and it's nice and slimy, when the water that you're making tea with cools, it starts to pull those same types of constituents out of meadowsweet. Um, meadowsweet is also a wonderful, wonderful herb for indigestion, reflux, and heartburn. I know my husband gets heartburn quite frequently and he uses meadowsweet tea and it is always effective. It's wonderful. 
So we're gonna do one part meadow sweet. The next herb that we're going to be using is rose hip. Now rose hips, I'm actually not going to use the teacup to measure this. I just want to use about a tablespoon for this whole thing. So rose hips are a wonderful source of vitamin C. They're antioxidant. They help you repair yourself. So like after infection, they help you bounce back. They're great for people who have been overexposed to the sun. So people who live on the coast. Um, they're just wonderful for your immunity because of that level of vitamin C and antioxidants. It really helps your body fight off any kind of infection that you might be having. It's also wonderful as a preventative, and if you put it in cold water, it does the same thing. It has a nice demulcent quality, so it's kind of slimy. Um, we call that mucilage in herbalism. So when you're using herbs like meadowsweet or marshmallow root or rose hips, a lot of times you're after the mucilage, which is the slimy part. Delicious, slimy, slimy herbs. <laughs> um, and it also adds a really nice flavor into a tea blend. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind if you want something to flavor your tea with. I always love rose hips. I think they make a wonderful, wonderful flavor, especially when mixed with like orange peels. Okay, so the next herb we're going to be using is Lobelia. And Lobelia, Lobelia is a potent um, bronchiodilator. So basically what it does is it opens up the lungs and allows you to get better use of your lungs, better oxygen oxygenation of your blood, and helps you breathe a lot easier. Um, I do use this one a lot for my son who has asthma as a tincture. Um, when he's having you know, some wheezing or some trouble breathing, we do a Lobelia tincture. When combined with Grindelia or gumweed as a tincture, it is wonderful for like those lingering sort of snotty cough, um, you know, like the, the chest congestion that can come after a long illness. So it's wonderful for eliminating that. Lobelia does have the unfortunate nickname or folk name of pukeweed. And that's because if you overdo it, it is also a very powerful, um, it's a very powerful vomit inducing herb. I can't remember the technical term right now. I'm sorry, I'm having some brain fog. Um, it'll come to me probably after I finish this video, but it, it makes you vomit if you take too much of it. Now, the amount I'm putting in this tea, I'm doing about half a part, a little bit more than half a part of Lobelia, is not going to be enough to cause somebody to vomit. It will be enough for somebody's lungs to open up nicely, but it will not be enough for them to vomit. Um, there are applications for herbs that make you vomit. For instance, if you accidentally ate something that was toxic in the woods and Lobelia happened to be growing there and you discovered your mistake in time, you could use Lobelia to make yourself vomit and possibly save your own life that way. So it's something to keep in mind. Lobelia, AKA pukeweed, wonderful for the lungs and in emergency situations can be used to induce vomiting. The next herb that we're going to use is dandelion root from the common dandelion Taraxacum officinalis, um, which is common dandelions. They grow everywhere. Um, I'm going to do slightly more than half, slightly more than half a part of dandelion root. And I'm doing dandelion root because of a few reasons. Number one, when you are recovering from a prolonged illness, a lot of times you are malnourished and might be deficient in several different minerals. Dandelion is a huge, huge, huge boost of minerals to your body. Um, it's also a bitter tonic, so it's good for your liver. And it's strengthening, so it helps you recover faster by supporting the systems in your body that eliminate illness in the first place. So for instance, if you have been sick your liver has been working very hard to keep you healthy. And when you get done with an illness or even in the midst of an illness, taking care of your liver may shorten your duration of illness. Um, it can also just strengthen you overall. Um, even if you're not sick, I mean, I love dandelion. I think dandelion, nettle, 
and calendula. Like there's so many that I would say take every day. This is definitely one of them. As an herbalist, it's a really hard question to answer. Like what's your favorite flower? Mine has always been dandelion and people are shocked by that because it's a weed, but it's one of the most nutritive foods on earth. You can eat the entire plant. You can eat the flower, the stem, the leaves, the, the root. I mean, you can eat the entire thing. Of course, don't pick your dandelions where people have been spraying Roundup because that's poison. Um, but you can pick dandelions, you know, if you're out in the mountains and away from the road and you see dandelions growing, you know, go for it. They're so good for you. I really like to make tea with the fresh dandelion heads in the springtime. Um, if you are going to harvest dandelions and make like dandelion syrup or dandelion wine, please leave some for the bees because that is their first food in the springtime and without it they die. So leave some for the bees. There are plenty to go around, just don't take all of them from a single area. Um, I do make a dandelion syrup every spring. I would be happy to do a video of that when the time comes. I'm really looking forward to spring. Um, as many of you know, I do use a wheelchair most of the time, but I did just get crutches and I think I will be able to do some short hikes this summer and get out there and be a real herbalist again. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but back to the tea, sorry guys, that was a bit of a tangent. I'm going to add some ground ginger. Normally I wouldn't add ground ginger, I would add like ginger pieces, but unfortunately I ran out and this is for an order, I have to get out soon. Um, there's nothing wrong with using ginger powder other than it might create some sediment in the teacup if you're using a tea bag. Um, some people would use this, you know, with a tea ball or loose leaf. However you want to do it is fine. If you don't mind sediment, no big deal. I am going to be including a cloth tea bag, so it shouldn't create very much sediment. Um, and I used about a tablespoon of ginger. So ginger is a wonderful herb for vasodilation. Basically what that means is it's opening up your veins and letting blood flow freely. It helps with circulation. One of the issues that people are having with this COVID virus is that their blood is kind of thickening and it's sort of contracting their arteries and things. And so ginger is one where it actually thins the blood and then it also opens the vessels. So it can be really helpful, especially in conjunction with like lobelia, which is going to open up your lungs to open up your lungs and your um, your vascular system at the same time and really get that oxygen moving throughout your body is going to be so beneficial. So especially if you aren't serious enough to go to the hospital but you're really suffering and you're kind of suffering at home, this is one that I highly recommend um, and especially in conjunction with the sacred tea or the sacred breath chest rub that I've made. Um, you know I have had wonderful feedback on these from a couple people. This batch that I'm making is actually for a friend who tested positive for coronavirus and I'm sure she's gonna give me some lovely feedback when she uses it but she'll be about the fifth person to use this tea while she's sick and so far I've had nothing but wonderful wonderful feedback um, so if you're interested it is available in my Etsy shop along with the sacred breath chest rub and if you have any questions that you don't feel comfortable asking in the comments section of this video feel free to message me on my Etsy as well um, which I, of course, I will link in the description box below. So that's it for herbs that are gonna go in to the Sacred Breath Tea. Now I am going to blend it. Now you're gonna see me blend it with my hands. And the thing is, always, always, always have clean hands. Some people prefer to use a spoon to blend their tea. I really like to think of blending the tea with my hands as infusing it with my intention. Um, for those of you who are into vibrational medicine, you'll understand how important that intention can be. So I'm going to go ahead and just dig in here with my hands and kind of blend the tea nicely so that it's evenly distributed. And then it will be done. I will put it into a bag, put a label on it, and call it good. So I can't even tell you guys how wonderful this smells, but it is a bit dusty in here. Because <laughs> all these dried herbs, you know, they break into tiny little bits and turn into dust. I feel like I could do an ASMR video of this. And there you have it. This is the sacred breath tea. 
Um, I will put this in a bag, take a picture, and post it at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for being here and hanging out with me and my apothecary today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you want to see more videos like this or if there's another herbal video that you would like to see. And I will make that for you. So don't forget that you are sacred, beautiful, precious, blessed, beloved beings. And drink some water, wash your hands, wear your masks, be kind to yourselves and each other. I love you and I'll see you all next time.